MMA Rants and Raves, UFC 119, Minotaro Nogueira versus Frank Mir 2. Guys, let's talk about this potential fight. Now, we've seen these guys fight before. Now, being the fact that they fought before, this gives us an idea of what might happen in the second fight. Now, the best way to predict this fight is basically to look what happened in the last fight and to look at the skill set of these two fighters. Now, Nogueira, we know, he's definitely probably the greatest Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu heavyweight to ever live. And the strategy that he implements is a very dangerous one, especially for his health. I mean, the guy just basically gets beaten up for a good part of the fight and just looks for the right opportunity when it finally gets to the ground where he's totally in his domain and then gets the submission. How many times have we seen it? We've seen it against Tim Sylvia. We've seen it against Crow Cop. That's what he does. He's not a very skilled stand-up fighter. He's not a guy that's going to strike with you and knock you out. He's a guy that's going to do whatever he has to do to get you to the ground. Whether it's some striking, a little bit of grappling. You know, of course, he's not a wrestler, which actually works against him because that's the means to get your opponent to get down to the ground. So he uses different types of techniques in order to get you there. And once he does, he definitely has the advantage over anyone because he's basically the best as a heavyweight in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu throughout his career. Now, of course, it's not a healthy strategy because the guy has taken more abuse than any heavyweight that I've ever known. Those three wars with Fedor just getting hammered with those bombs. Nobody hits as hard as him. Getting hit, beaten up by Crow Cop, including a high head kick, which may have done more than just knock somebody out. I mean, that's just dangerous. Took it, absorbed it, kept on fighting. Just unbelievable. The guy's chin is legendary. Also took a beating in that Heath Herring fight. Many people don't realize that. Those who really haven't watched it before he was able to come up with the victory, you know. And the Tim Sylvia fight, Tim Sylvia is beating the heck out of him before he was able to get Sylvia to the ground. Before they both got to the ground, he was able to submit him. So, you know, he basically implements a strategy that's very dangerous. And that's how he wins fights. Now, if you look at Frank Mir, Frank Mir has something Nogueira doesn't have. He's not only a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and a very good one. He's defeated some monsters himself using his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I mean, he got Brock Lesnar in a knee bar. That's a very unusual, difficult submission to get. I mean, it's got to take the ultimate opportunist and the very skilled, well-rounded Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter to get that. And he got it and got the victory. And then he also broke Tim Sylvia's arm. I mean, this guy is a tenacious Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter to get the heavyweight title belt. So he can really hand himself on the ground. One of the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts out there as a heavyweight. Now, it was really interesting to see the fight, the first Frank Mir Nogueira fight, because you saw Frank Mir fighting Nogueira with a style that posed a matchup problem for Nogueira. Nogueira is not a top level striker. His striking is professional quality as far as a fighter, but he's not a top level striker. Frank Mir is, and we saw it in the fight. I mean, he was really good, especially counter-punching. I saw Nogueira, if you watched the fight, he was the guy taking the center of the octagon. He was trying to attack Mir. Mir was doing more of a counter-punch strategy. He was letting Nogueira come and moving his head, making it difficult for Nogueira to time him, and then backing up, and then firing back. One, two, two jabs, and then uppercut. He was just really, really good at the very fluid. His boxing looked really polished. He just... And then when he finally got Nogueira down, he did some ground and pound. You know, and he actually could have gotten on the ground with Nogueira. This guy's really good. He's only just a black belt. But he said, you know what? I'm going to attack this guy at his weak point, and that's the striking. And it just showed in that fight. That was Nogueira's weak point. He actually did some ground and pound. And then when he saw it was just getting maybe a little bit too dangerous before Nogueira could get any risk control, he just busted out of it, got right back up again, and forced Nogueira back into the stand-up. Did the same thing, knocked him down again. Finally, he got the final knockout, which was a big surprise. It never happened before. It was a TKO. You know, after that fight, you saw Nogueira come back. I mean, he fought Kotor, looked good. And then, of course, against the Velasquez fight, it just didn't look good at all. I mean, he just got knocked out, which has never happened before. It was total. I mean, it was a one-punch knockout. It just flattened Nogueira. Now, the point I want to make is, is Chuck Liddell. What does Chuck Liddell and Nogueira have in common? I'm afraid that... Nogueira's chin is just not the same. 
I mean, if you look at Chuck Liddell, I mean, you can hit him with everything. This guy has such an unbelievable chin. And then recently, over his past few fights, he was just getting knocked out very quick. The chin just can't handle it anymore. Now, Liddell has been through wars, but he hasn't been through what O'Gara has been through. I mean, the abuse that this man takes was just unbelievable. And the guy's still fighting, and now you see what seems to be happening as far as the same thing with O'Gara. You just see his past few fights, he's weakening. He's getting knocked out faster. So the question is, how much more abuse could this man take? And although Nogueira wants this rematch, you know, he had the staph infection, and he said he wasn't feeling well, okay, let's say he's better now, right? But what about his chin? Is his chin as good as it was then? So while he got better one way, maybe he declined in the other way. And when you're going to be forced to do stand-up with Frank Mayer, you know, that's the perfect way to get your chin tested. And that's not good for Noguera, because if Frank Mayer implements the same strategy, which it seems he just might, it's going to pose a big matchup problem for Noguera. Because basically he's going to force Noguera into a stand until he gets him down, a little ground and pound, get up. I see the same strategy by Frank Mayer, as far as that's concerned. And although it seems like Noguera may be on a decline, I see Frank Mir actually getting better. You know, he did have that very, very, very bad loss against Carlin, which was a total defeat. Right? But he looked really good in the Congo fight. I mean, he basically knocked out Congo one punch. So Frank Mir never looked like he had knockout power like that before that fight. So this guy does, and of course he's a new, improved, larger Frank Mir as far as his body. The guy's 265 pounds now, which is the weight that he might enter the octagon against Noguera. I don't know that for sure, but that might even pose a bigger problem for Noguera. Now you have a bigger guy who arguably hits harder, so it's going to be even tougher for Noguera. You know, so I basically see Frank Mir, especially in the point of his career and especially in the point of where Noguera is in his career now, as being a little bit too much for Noguera to handle. So I'm going to have to take Frank Mir to win this fight. I'd like to know what you think. I'd like to know what you think about Noguera's future and Frank Mir's future as well. Please leave your comments below the video, rate this video, and subscribe. And thank you for tuning in.